Okay, as we all know, when we have the principal square root of negative 1, we get an imaginary unit, i. But have you ever thought about, what if we have the i's root of negative 1? Oh well, yes, we can use this trick to solve this right away, but let me give you guys some detail. First, we are going to take negative 1 to the complex world, and here's a quick review. Here is the real axis, and here is the imaginary axis. And let's say we have a complex number right here, and let's write it as a plus b i. a and b are real, and a means the distance from here to here, and b means the distance from here to here. And this is the standard form of a complex number. But we can actually represent a complex number by using another coordinate system, the polar coordinate. If we know the distance from the origin to the point, that's called that r, and if we know the angle from here to here, that's called a the theta, then we can write this as r e i theta. And to make sense of e to the i theta, we will have to utilize the Euler's formula. So here is the deal. Note, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this right here should also remind you of the polar coordinate that you guys have done back in pre-cal or cal 2. Yeah, and now it's just a complex version of that pretty much. Okay, now let's look at the negative 1. So, if we look at negative 1, let's say it's right here. It's a real number, which is also a complex number. We need two things. The first thing is the distance from the origin to this point. And because we're talking about th the distance, r is just equal to 1, yeah. And the angle, well, it's just this rotation, which is 180 degrees, but we are adults now, so let's use pi. Angle theta is equal to pi. Cool. So this means negative 1 is equal to r is 1, and then e is e, i is i, and the pi for the theta. So we have the pi right here. That's pretty cool. Now let's go back. Negative 1, let's write it as e to the i pi, which is exactly what this show is, right? If you move the 1 to the other side. Yeah, e to the i pi. But what do we do with the radical, though? Just like usual, because this right here is the index, so we can write it as its power, power, its power form, namely 1 over i. Cool, huh? Yeah, yeah you know why I... Uh, this is space, but I will tell you. But anyway, if you look at this and that, we can just cancel the i and i, right? Multiply the powers. So in the end, we see that this right here is just nicely equal to e to the pi. And guess what? This right here, it's a real number. Earlier, when we just take an innocent square root yeah, of negative 1, we get complex number i. But you take the i's root, you get real number e to the pi. Yeah. And in fact, this is not the only answer, though, because Mm, if you look at this picture again, pi is not the only angle that can give you the rotation from here to here. Because we could have gone the other direction. In that case, it would be negative pi. Or if you want to keep rotating, then, you know, once you get to pi, you can rotate 2 pi again, right? And then keep on going, or the other way, keep on going. So the whole angle for all this is not just pi, but we also have to add to um, pi, where n is an integer. That means you can do whatever, however many rotations that you want. So we will come here instead of pi. We will write it as plus 2 um, pi right here for the angle, and then multiply by i right here, and all that. So that's why I left a space right here, because I will have to add to um, pi here, and of course, this is still really nice because the i and 1 over i, they cancel. So we get e to the pi plus 2 n pi. And let's make a note that n is an integer. So in fact, we have infinitely many answers. And when we have the e to the pi right here, this is the so-called principal value. And you can just think about this as like the first answer for all these answers. And of course, if you want more answers, 
you can plug in n is equal to 1 into here then you can see we get e to the 3 pi and then the next one will be e to the 5 pi and so on so on so on but don't forget we can also plug in negative integers so if you have negative 1 we will get e to the negative pi and the next one will be e to the negative 3 pi e to the negative 5 pi and so on so on so on as you can see when we have a crazy ice root of negative 1 we actually end up with infinitely many real numbers but earlier we just get a not real number i how crazy is this right and i know a lot of you guys are interested in learning complex numbers but unfortunately you might not have the resources so in this case i will highly recommend you guys to check out today's sponsor brilliant brilliant.org is a perfect place for anyone who wants to learn math science and computer science in a deeper level it has over 60 courses and thousands of interactive lessons and it is still adding new ones every month now let me show you its complex number course and i hope you are just excited as i am because it provides a lot more information and interactive practice on the things from today's video and of course that is the complex numbers and Euler's identity and in fact i have never heard of julia sets but they look really really cool and now here's a question for you guys to try what's negative one to the pi's power comment your answer down below i have been a math teacher for over a decade now and i strongly believe that brilliant can help you reach your goals in getting better in math so let's get started today use the link in the description brilliant.org slash black pen red pen so that you can get 20 percent off discount i want to thank brilliant for sponsoring this video and i also want to thank you guys for checking them out